look at a place like Detroit or a place like Flint and the terrible decline that it had, and we think of it as, we see it as something, as a place where giant macro forces of the economy simply, the winds of time and the, the winds of change simply turned against this place and it turned out so badly uh, because the industry moved away. But you make the argument here that many of these, these terrible developments were actually the result of, of a constructive effort. I mean, an effort where somebody's saying the way to, pro to have progress, the way to move forward is to do X, Y, and Z, but it turns out that the consequences of doing X, Y, and Z are fairly catastrophic for a whole lot of people. Uh, demolition means progress comes from the signs that GM used to place in front of its shuttered automobile plants in cities such as Flint. And the signs suggested that cities such as Flint couldn't really move forward to civic greatness until these old closed plants met the wrecking ball. And I, I still remember the first time I saw one of those signs was shortly after I moved to Flint. And I, at first I thought, well, this is a very trite uh, corporate slogan. And in many ways it was. But as I started to dig into Flint's history, I realized that demolition means progress was also a very powerful metaphor for thinking about the city's long history of revitalization. And so rather than thinking about Flint's uh, economic changes through the lens of decline, I've tried to narrate Flint's history and also urban America's history more broadly as one of revitalization and its consequences. And what I mean by that is that dating back to the 1920s and 30s, Flint's civic uh, and, and political and economic leaders look to constantly revitalize uh, the city by enacting different redevelopment policies. And so in the 1930s, uh, uh, public school officials and industrial executives uh, collaborated to transform all of the city's public schools into racially segregated, vocationally oriented elementary schools and community centers. Flint's leaders constantly looked to demolish and tear down what they perceived to be outdated or inefficient structures and institutions and rebuild them to be more profitable. And so during the 1940s and 50s, the city or the GM executives were tearing down old urban plants and rebuilding them in the suburbs. And when those efforts didn't create a renaissance, the city looked to tear down African-American neighborhoods and replace them with the freeway and new factories and public housing. And as I narrate in the book, uh, this long string of revitalization efforts ultimately uh, contributed to Flint being one of the most racially segregated, economically polarized, and politically fragmented regions in the nation. And so even in the 1960s and 1970s, right, the era of civil rights, uh, GM is still being referred to uh, as GM Crow by civil rights activists in the city. And GM, even in the era of, of significant environmental reforms and legislation, is still heavily polluting uh, adja neighborhoods adjacent to its factories, neighborhoods populated uh, by and large by African-American people. And so it's one thing to, to put you know, actors of the early 20th century into their proper historical context. Uh, it's another to excuse actions, discriminatory actions that occurred uh, deep into the 20th century and beyond. At, at a time when people should have known better. That's a sim Absolutely. simple enough way Absolutely. to say it.